Hi folks, it's Mike Murphy with a beginner friendly tutorial on how to get started using Neon for free. And I'm gonna show you how to create a new Postgres database from scratch. This tutorial is gonna walk you through from the very beginning where we first create a new Neon account. Then I'm gonna show you how to set up a new project, how to navigate around Neon. Then I'm gonna show you how to create a new Postgres database from scratch. Once we create the new database, I'm then gonna show you how you can create tables so you can start organizing all of your data. And then I'm gonna show you how you can actually start adding content manually to your new table so you can start filling out your new Postgres database. And in the next tutorial after this one, I'm gonna show you how you can enable the PG vector extension on your new Postgres database, which is going to convert your Postgres database into a vector store or into a vector database so you can use it in your RAG system or your retrieval augmented generation system. And if you want more information on this, I will leave a link to a tutorial about RAG. Open a web browser, go to neon.com, click sign up in the top right corner. Sign in with a Google account or just fill in your email and password. A confirmation email gets automatically sent. Open the email message from Neon and click to activate your account. For project name, I'm gonna call mine Mike Murphy Content Factory because that is what I'm building. Postgres version, I'm gonna keep it at 17. For cloud service provider, I'm gonna use AWS, so make sure that is checked. And for region, I'm gonna keep it on this North Virginia. I live in Florida, so that's the closest region. I'm just gonna keep this as is. You can see the region that you selected over here. You can also see what is included in your free plan. And I will leave a link in the description to Neon if you want to check it out. And once you're done, you're just gonna click on create to create the project. This page will list all of the projects that you've created on Neon. And I got to this page by clicking on the organization name in the top left corner. And then I clicked on projects. To create a new project, just click on the new project button in the top right. And you'll see the tooltip says you can create 19 more projects as the free plan of Neon includes up to 20 projects. This diagram, which is in the Neon docs, so I'll leave a link in the description so you can view this. This really made things a lot easier for me to understand. So everything falls under your organization name. When you first set up your Neon account, after you click the activation link in the email, you set up the project, Neon automatically created a default organization name for you. You'll find your organization name in the Neon dashboard in the top left corner. And you can change the name of your organization at any time. Just go to settings and there you can change the organization name. Projects are containers that live inside of an organization. And a project contains everything except API keys. API keys on Neon are considered global by default, meaning when you create a new API key, they are available for all projects within an organization. And you can view your API keys in the settings of your dashboard. All data lives inside of branches. When you create a new project, Neon automatically creates a new root branch called production. And this production branch is designated as your default branch. Each branch can contain multiple databases and roles. I'll click to open the Mike Murphy Content Factory project. Now I'm in that project's dashboard. And if you had multiple projects, you could toggle between them at the top by clicking this drop down. To view all of the branches in a project, and to view all of the databases, roles, and to create new databases in a branch. Well, when you're in the project dashboard, go to the left sidebar, click on branches, and there you're gonna see a list of all of the branches for that project. As noted previously, when you create a new project, Neon automatically creates a new root branch called production and it assigns it as the default branch for that project. Neon also automatically creates a second branch called development. This is for local production only. Now I am not gonna be using this. You can learn more about it in the Neon docs. I am gonna be focusing on the production or the default. 
to view all of the existing databases and roles that were set up when I created the new project and to create a new database to hold the data from my Mike Murphy Content Factory, I'm going to click on the production branch. This is the default branch and then click on roles and databases. So when you create a new project, Neon automatically creates a database called NeonDB with the role NeonDB underscore owner. And to create a new Postgres database, which is going to hold all of my data from my Mike Murphy content factory, and I'm creating this database in the default production branch, I'm going to come over here and click on add database. Now we already knew this but this just confirms that we are creating the new database in the default production branch. Now enter in the name that you want for your database. And if you are gonna separate words, you cannot use hyphens in the database name. You must use underscore. So I'm gonna call mine MM for Mike Murphy underscore content underscore factory. And I'm gonna use the default neon DB underscore owner that just ensures that I'm using all of the correct permissions that were set up in the default. But if you want your own custom name for your database, before you go through this step, just go to the roles section and click on add role and just add a new role. And then when you come back to add a new database, that is going to be in this dropdown. But again, I'm just keeping it on the neon DB underscore owner. Then I'm going to click on create to actually create my new Postgres database. Here we go. Boom. My MM Content Factory Postgres database has been created. It is ready for me to start adding data. To view and to customize and edit the data in your database, just click on Edit Data. So MM Content Factory is my database. All of the data that I'm going to organize is going to live inside of this one database. And the way that I'm going to organize it is by creating individual tables. So I'll have a table for my podcast, a table for my YouTube channel, a table for articles, but they're all going to live inside of my main MM Content Factory database. If you use Google Sheets or Excel or Numbers, when you create a new spreadsheet, the new spreadsheet is like a new database. So once you set up the new spreadsheet or the database, well then you can create individual tables to organize different types of data within the same spreadsheet or within the same database. So I'm on the production branch. I'm on the tables tab. Make sure that you're on the right database. So I'm on my MM Content Factory database. I'm gonna come right here and just click plus and choose table. I'll use this first table to organize all of my podcast episodes. So the first thing I'll do is give my table a name. I'll just click, I'll call it MMU for Mike Murphy Unplugged. I'll do underscore and I'll just put podcast. And down here, we start adding the column headers to our table. It's the same way as if you were building a Google spreadsheet, you add the column headers at the top of your table. That is what these boxes are doing. I'll keep this first column as ID. So Neon is gonna auto generate an ID number for each record that we add to our table. To add a new column, just click add column. If you want to delete a column, just click the X. And if you want to collapse a column to make more room, just click the little arrow here, and that's gonna collapse the column. So I'll click add column. I'll call column two, episode number. So I'll do episode underscore number. I'll change the data type to integer. That's just gonna format that column as a number. I'll add a couple of more columns, and then we'll take a look at the table. So I'll click add column. I'll keep this one as text. I'll call it column name, title, add column, I'll keep it as text. This one I'll call summary, add column. I'll call column five description. I'll clap some of these to make a little more room here. I'll add one more column. I'll keep it as text and I'll call this one transcript. I will tell you this before you drive yourself crazy. The order that you add the columns is the order that they're going to stay in your database. So once you add the columns, you can't just click and rearrange them in any order that you want. If you go out of order, you can always just delete one, add a couple columns, and to create a table so you can start adding data to your database, just click on review and create. So this is what it looks like when the pros add data to their database. 
click create table and you just created a table in your database to add data and rows to this table i'll click add record id is going to be automatically generated episode number we'll start with number one so let's click and type one title click you see those three little lines right there that's the multi-line editor you can click that to open that up if it's easier for you to type let's call this about mike murphy save i'm going to skip the summary and description i don't have that and for transcript i actually do have a text document with a transcript so i'll select it all command a command c i'll click i'll click that multi-line to open up the editor paste it save and i'll click save to save this row to the table you can filter content to show exactly what you want. You can hide and show columns. Just click, click to hide, click again to show. You can add additional columns right in the table. So there's a little plus icon at the end. Just click that to add a new column. You can also click this icon here to go back to that original view where we set up the table. I can also change the table name at any time and to get back to the content view, just click the icon. Now for those with a keen eye, when I first set up this table, you may have noticed that it said limit of 50 rows. And if you look in the top right corner, it is telling me that there is a 50 row limit. Not to worry, you can make the limit whatever you want. So I could do 500, now the limit is 500 for this table. To delete a table at any time, just hover your cursor over the table name, click the ellipsis and choose drop. And just to make sure that you can get back to your databases and tables at any time. So when you sign into Neon, it might look similar to this. So we have our organization name in the top. Click on projects, click to open up a project. If you want to view all the branches, you're going to click on branches. There's our default production branch. We can click that to open it. We can click on roles and databases and we can go down to content factory and click edit. But there's an easier way. So when you first sign in to Neon, click to open up your project, come over here in the left sidebar. Now you can just click on tables. That's gonna take you right to your tables. So just make sure that you have the correct database selected. You're gonna see all of your tables listed here. And then when you want to add a new table, so maybe I wanna start organizing my YouTube data, I'll click, I'll create a new table. And I'm gonna call this YouTube and I'll call it videos. And I'll start building out this table and I can just start creating tables and they're all going to live inside of my main MM content factory database. So now you know how to get started using Neon for free and how to create a new Postgres database. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to enable the PG vector extension on a Neon Postgres database. By enabling the PG vector extension, it is going to convert a new Postgres database into a vector database or into a vector store so we can store vector embeddings, which is an essential element if you're building a RAG system or a retrieval augmented generation. So out of the box, your new Postgres database created by Neon cannot store embeddings. But when we enable the PG vector extension, we're gonna take our new Postgres database and turn it into a vector database, similar to something like Chroma DB, or maybe you've heard of Pinecone or Weavy8 or Quadrant. These are all native vector databases. Well, once we enable the PG vector extension, our powerful new Neon Postgres database is going to work the same way so we can store embeddings and start building a very powerful RAG system that uses AI to work with our own data. And that is how to create a new Postgres database on Neon. My name is Mike Murphy, your AI handyman. Cheers.